The following portion of Bloom is sponsored by Lifeguard Imaging. Coming up on Bloom, a nonprofit established in memory of Emily Morgan Pierce, helping other kids fighting cancer. We were thrust into the world of childhood cancer um, and all of the grief and, and heartache and craziness that comes with it. And how to get a free heart scan right here in Tampa Bay. And we're whipping up melon agua chili in the Bloom kitchen. We'll have all that and more as Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, starts now. I'm Gail Guayardo. Welcome to Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging. Today we're focusing on love and loss, and sadly, people pass before their time because they don't really know what's going on with their health. But in Tampa Bay, we're lucky. One of only seven places in the country with access to an innovative scan that screens for heart disease and hundreds of forms of different cancers in their earliest stages. It's being reported one to three lives were saved here in Tampa Bay because we have access to this scan. But in Tampa Bay, we're lucky. One of only seven places in the country with access to an innovative scan that screens for heart disease and hundreds of different forms of cancer in their earliest stages. It's being reported one to three lives are saved here in Tampa Bay every day because we have access to this scan. Joining me now from Lifeguard Imaging is the Vice President of Business Development, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer and NFL great Martin Gramatica to tell us more about their innovative scan and a special program for healthcare workers. It is so great to see you. Good to see you guys. You know, healthcare workers are so busy saving other people's lives that sometimes they put their own on the back burner and you're having a special offer for them. Yes, Gail, we want to thank them for everything they do because you're absolutely right. While, especially like uh, the perfect example is the pandemic. While we were all at home trying to make sure we don't leave our homes and, and quarantining, they were out working and making sure that they could treat us, uh, whatever it took to, to have people survive that pandemic, right? So we want to say thank you for everything they do for, for the community. Yeah, and it's incredible because Lifeguard Imaging does this for our military members, our teachers, our healthcare workers. And you felt, you, you guys are very passionate about creating programs for all of these incredible people in our community. Especially the, the, the jobs in the, in the, in the where it's stressful and, mm -hmm. and, and lack of sleep. Uh, again, you don't have the time to take care of yourself while you're taking care of others. So we want to make sure that, and, and they can come in at any time. You know, we want to encourage them to come in right away because that way if we do set their baseline, we, we get it done right away and then, and then we can start monitoring them. But we want to th say thank you for everything they do for the community. So talk to me about the process. <coughs> I've gone through it myself, so has my husband. It's, it's really simple. Yes, yeah, so any of your viewers that uh, comes in for the free heart scan promotion, if, uh, they're going to meet with a patient advocate. The patient advocate is going to explain what our full body uh, scan scans for. And uh, to clarify, our full body goes from the top of the shoulders to the base of the pelvis. And then from there, they're going to explain the legacy program and how it works. And, and, and if the patient just chooses to do a heart scan, they pay absolutely nothing. If not, we're going to explain some pricing. The one thing we'll do at Lifeguard is we'll never let money be a reason why somebody doesn't scan. So we've, we'll figure out a ways to get them to, to get a full body scan if they're interested in doing a full body scan. Yeah, and a lot of people are because this legacy <coughs> program gives you the opportunity to continually monitor your health year by year. So if something is you spotted, I mean, you can keep track of what's going on with your health. Yeah. We see our body change on the outside. We work out, we don't work out, we eat, we don't eat well, we don't eat well, right? Our body's doing the same thing on the inside. I've scanned three times and my scan has been different every single time. So it, that, that's why it's important to scan every year because if something were to develop that is dangerous or cancerous, we're gonna capture it earlier. And you do capture it earlier. It's unbelievable to me the stories from real people whose life, in their words, my life was saved by lifeguard imaging. It's not just a slogan that one to three lives are saved every day. No, I thought that was a t-shirt slogan. Yeah. It would be pretty cool to put on a t-shirt, but we see an average of about 15 appointments a day and one to three of our patients will, will have either heart disease or cancer that they have no idea they have. And that's why we encourage our patients to come in when they're feeling well. 
because if you have a symptom, then you're going to go see your doctor, your specialist, your primary care doctor. But if you're feeling well and something's going on inside, you'll never know it until it's too late sometimes. That's why we want to make sure that patients understand if you're feeling well, that means come in. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean everything's fine because you mm -hmm. just don't know until you look inside. Yeah, it, it makes me cringe sometimes when people are like, I don't want to know. I would want to know because, I mean, I have met uh, some of the folks that have come through that had cancer that was able to get treated before it spread it, right. before they needed the invasive chemotherapy. The treatment protocol started early can make a huge difference. Well, the thing is when patients or people say they don't want to know, they're going to know. So right. they're either going to know early enough to treat it and, and survive it with a higher percentage and more importantly with good quality of life, eliminating and avoiding the chemo and radiation because sometimes patients can avoid that by capturing it early or you just wait when it's too late. So you will know. I would just rather know sooner bef that way I can treat it. Yeah, another day with our family, our friends, our loved ones. Call today, right now, 813-582-5222, or visit lifeguardimaging.com. You'll receive a Bloom special offer, a free heart scan when you mention Gaylor Bloom. That's a $599 value. So call today, 813-582-5222, for this special offer. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, saving lives through early detection. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Welcome back to Bloom. Today we're helping you work through loss and grief, whether it's a death or the loss of a friendship, relationship, or maybe even family estrangement. Joining me now with more is psychologist and leadership consultant, Dr. Irma Campos. It's so good to see you, Dr. Campos. You too, as always. <laughs> so let's talk about grief because it really is experienced in so many different ways mm -hmm. and really it can happen over long periods of time. Absolutely, yeah. There's no definitive period for grief. Um, we know that there are cultural considerations too that can impact grief, individual considerations, um, the type of grief, if it was unexpected, expected, all of those factors that can influence the time in which grief really takes place. And we also are learning more and more that there aren't necessarily these fixed stages of grief like we used to think kind of in the field, meaning that you start with one um, kind of sense of, you know, what you're feeling and then you transition to another, but instead you can vacillate between those different stages over time. So let's talk about the stages of grief. How does yeah. it typically happen? Yeah, so it can really happen in a lot of ways. I think, again, it depends on the individual and kind of how they're really feeling grief. Um, typically, we would think that there's going to be a sense of denial and difficulty with accepting. Uh, so that's really where definitely, I think, a sense of being able to eventually accept that loss, including the emotions, the thoughts, um, and all of that that arises for that person is going to be particularly helpful. But people can go through different versions. They can go from denial to acceptance to denial again to having a sense of just longing for the person. It really is not fixed and so it can look differently but what we know is it's really important to be able to be attuned to what's happening and also um, through you know the values that you have defined that are connected to that other individual who you've lost being able to live a life according to those values. So, you know, once we go through the stages, we understand and accept what we're dealing with, how do we move through it? Yeah, I really love, I think, using acceptance and commitment therapy, which I've talked about before, a therapy that's um, evidence-based, research-based, and can be applied to a wide range of concerns. Um, this therapeutic approach and coaching approach really helps people, one, try not to avoid what they're experiencing internally, whether that be memories, thoughts, emotions, and by that I mean not trying to suppress, but instead allowing what arises for us in the here and now to be there but also behaviorally, meaning through actions, living a life that's in accordance with what really matters to us or our values. And so that can look like being able to honor the person that we've lost through a sense of honoring their legacy um, through those actions. And you know, from a personal standpoint, having gone through an unexpected loss, I can really speak to how much that therapeutic approach personally has helped me. That's good to hear. And a lot of times when we think about death, I mean, or 
excuse me, grief, we think, oh, death, but really you can experience it on so many levels, be it like a loss of a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. a friendship, mm -hmm. you know, it, there's mm -hmm. so many estranged family members that you can't seem to connect with, That's that right. will leave you th with those very same feelings. Yeah, and I think it's important to name that because we traditionally think of grief and loss as a permanent loss or death, but it really does not have to be. It can be any sense of loss to someone that we had love or care for, or even someone that maybe we haven't been able to have in our lives. So it can leave us with a sense of, for example, if we've had uh, abandonment in our lives earlier on, that can also be experienced as a sense of grief and loss for something that we didn't have that we naturally desire to have. So I think it's important to name that and acknowledge that. And the same approach in terms of accepting what's coming up, but still not allowing necessarily those emotions to dictate our behaviors would still be applicable and helpful. Dr. Irma, thank you so much for joining us. We so appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna share Dr. Irma's advice on bloomtampabay.com. And when we come back, how to help children cope with loss. Bloom, we'll be right back. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging, saving lives through early detection. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Welcome back to Bloom. From what parents should say to helping kids express their emotions in a healthy way, our next guest believes it's important for us to stand by our children during times of grief. Joining me now from Happy Counseling is licensed psychologist, Dr. Stacy Schenker. Nice to see you again, doctor, it's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me again, it's good to see you. So a lot of times when it comes to our children, mm -hmm. um, we forget that they grieve too, or mm -hmm. they feel loss, or you know, whatever, it doesn't necessarily have to be a death. Mm -hmm. I think for most children, they either experience a death of a pet or a death of a grandparent, and they process death very, very differently from adults because their brain is still developing, it's not yet fully grown, and so their understanding of death is completely different than ours, and we have to realize that. Talk me through some of those differences. Yes, yes, so first of all, you wanna find out from them what they're thinking first. You don't want to impose what you're thinking and how you're thinking of the death. So find out from them, like, what do they know about it? What are they thinking about it? Maybe they learned on TV, at school, and then ask them how they're feeling. They're gonna have a wide range of emotions from anger to sadness, and sometimes they're gonna block it out and be in denial and just want to play. So they're gonna experience a wide range of emotions, thoughts, and feelings, and I think it's important for you to find out from them what, what they're going through before you impose or project your own feelings, thoughts, and emotions on them. Now, once you have that line of communication, Dr. Schechner, then what do we do to help? So the, fir the first thing I would do to help is answer any questions that they have. If they don't have any questions, again, don't just think that they do and impose or project your answers to them. I would support them by saying, what do you need from me? Do you need to cry? Do you need to throw things? What do you need from mommy or daddy or aunt and uncle to get through this? And I would just allow them to lead you through the process. I know that we're supposed to keep the routines and schedules because that's familiar to them, but if they feel like one day they don't wanna to go to school, if they feel one day they wanna snuggle with you in bed, then that is okay too because every child is different. So not every child is going to need the same thing or grieve in the same way. So I would ask them, I would say, what do you need from me to help you through this? That, that's really, really interesting. Um, when do we know that it's time to get the professional help? Call someone like yourself. Yes, if you feel that it's been many, many, I would say more months, because I think during the first few weeks and month or so, I mean, it's normal for them to stay up at night. It's normal them for, for them to cry or not feel like eating or eating too much. But if this continues on over a period of months, and they still seem to not cope, not being wanting to go to school, not wanting to engage with friends, not feeling much about eating or exercising. If you see that these normal things that they really, that they usually do and that are good for them, they've stopped doing, that then it's time to seek professional help. That, that would be called an adjustment disorder, which is when they're not adjusting to something that does happen in life. 
Now, if they do adjust and they go back to living life as normal, it's okay if grief surfaces again, because I think even yes. as adults, I yes. mean, my, my parents died you know, six, oh, seven years ago, and I still have moments where, absolutely. yeah, where it just bubbles to the top. Absolutely, it may come back. They may not cry for a month, and you might think something's wrong, and then all of a sudden they might, they might cry. I remember at sleepaway camp when I was 13, I had a grandparent who died years ago, and all of a sudden it came upon me, and I felt it, and I started crying out of nowhere. So it's okay that they're not going to be cookie cutter and cope with grief just like everybody else. That is okay. Now, are there other situations, because I know you, you were saying most of the time when children are grieving, it's dealing with the loss of a pet or a loss of a grandparent, but are there other situations where this applies? I mean, it could be a separation of parents or, you know, really anything, a classmate, something going on, the loss of a friend, not to death, but just. Absolutely. And you know what? I always say that feels like a death. And it's actually sometimes even worse because there's no finality. If a friend moves away, they're still there, but you can't maybe see them as often as you want or maybe at all. If a friend doesn't want to be your friend anymore, that's just as terrible. It is like a death death and you're still going to have the same type of grieving process absolutely and you do you hear people say this all the time oh kids are resilient but not always yes they are but not always i think you have to show some patience and mm -hmm. love and compassion absolutely i mean kids are resilient but that doesn't mean they're going to have these wide range of emotions and also they're young and so their understanding and their questions if they have these questions what happens after death what is death why does it happen there that's very difficult to explain and it's very complicated for them to process. Well, I really appreciate you explaining too that the way kids process death and the way we, pro or, you know, we process death and loss is very different. Mm -hmm. And thank you for sharing all these helpful tips. Absolutely, thank you for having me. And we're gonna share Dr. Schechner's advice on bloomtampabay.com. And when we return, find out about a nonprofit supporting kids fighting cancer that was established in memory of Emily Morgan Pierce, who spent half her life battling childhood cancer. Bloom will be right back. Welcome back to Bloom. There's a charity on a mission to establish and maintain a community of support for kids experiencing medical, emotional, or financial needs and cultivating a happier and healthier future for them. Joining me now to tell us more is the president of the nonprofit, No More Umbrellas, Emily Pierce. Emily, welcome to Bloom. Thanks for having me. So I wanna talk about your non-for-profit, but can you share a little bit about your family's journey and what motivated you to start this mission? Of course. So my daughter Morgan was diagnosed in 2008 with a form of pediatric cancer called neuroblastoma. She was five years old. She had just started kindergarten and we were thrust into the world of childhood cancer um, and all of the grief and, and heartache and craziness that comes with it. Um, so as a family, we were hugely supported by our friends and our family and our community. Uh, and over the years, we, we realized that there were other families that had needs like we do, we did, uh, and we wanted to bring the people that wanted to support together with the people that needed support. I love the name of the foundation, No More Umbrellas. Give me a little bit about the history. Of course, so Morgan was an artist. She loved to do paintings and all kinds of creative things. She made a popsicle stick art piece when she was about nine years old. She painted each stick and the color of the rainbow and wrote no more umbrellas on the bottom. And it just struck me that this nine year old was looking for a world with no rain and only rainbows. And I stayed with that stayed with me for years. And so after she passed away in 2020, I knew that in order to carry on her legacy, I had to use that meaningful piece um, to help others. So to talk to me about the growth of your organization and, and who it helps. So we help local kids, Central Florida kids who are fighting cancer and their families and kids who are fighting life-threatening illnesses. So we give cash hardship assistance to the families. We provide gift cards to the hospitals for the social workers to pass out to families for food, for gas, incidentals. Uh, and we do a toy drive to collect games and toys and activities for those families when they're stuck at clinic or in the hospital so they have something to do. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize when they, you know, when you hear stories like the one you just shared with us, of course, it's absolutely heartbreaking. But 
we never stop to think of how it really impacts the lives of everyone in the family. And like you said, with just being able to maybe go pick up some food to feed your family, because you know parents then are left trying to juggle their life, their their careers, going from one doctor appointment to the next. Many times, a parent will have to quit their job so they can be by the child. Like it has a ripple effect that's very much you know it, it's not talked about enough. It's true. It's true. There's so many things. You know, life goes on. Bills still have to be paid. You have to mortgages or the power has to stay turned on groceries for your fridge when you get home So our support helps with those needs You know we there were many times that we would go to clinic and think that we were just going to be in and out Just a quick checkup and we wound up staying all day. I didn't bring lunch I didn't bring anything to do, you know, but so gift cards were a huge help for us We could order something in we could get some coloring books or something to do together Those things mean the world when you're when you're not prepared things happen how can we support your mission? What can I, because I know it's a very grassroots effort. Yes, yes, so we're all volunteer uh, board. Everybody uh, together is just there to carry on Morgan's spirit and her legacy um, and helping others. So uh, you can help by donating toys and gifts and um, activities to, to the nonprofit on our website. There's all the information, cash for cash hardship assistance um, and gift cards. And the, what about the, the emotional support for families? I mean, is there anything for that or is that just something separate? I mean, you try to help people just get through their day-to-day -day lives so it can maybe help balance their, you know, emotional swings because it's got to be so tough when you're thinking about everything. It is, it is. And so we, we like to say that we offer reprieve for parents uh, to be able to take time to feel those emotions, to work through those emotions, to be with their kids and make those memories. You know, cash hardship assistance or gift cards, it takes a little bit of the edge off of the worry of how we're going to make those things happen. So we offer that moment of reprieve so that they can they can take the time for that. And is there any, there must be a sense of community just to know that an organization like yours is out there because parents must feel so lost and alone on this journey and, and the siblings as well. It can be, it can be very lonely, yes, but the pediatric cancer community is, is a wonderful resource um, to each other, to one another. And so a lot of word of mouth um, helps us reach, you know, new families and be able to support them. And, and we offer, uh, like I said, all of our toys and games and activities, those are all for the siblings as well and gift cards and things um, because you don't want to forget those because they tag along oftentimes, you know, and there's several siblings. so. We want to make sure that they're included as well. Yeah, and you're right. I'm so glad, you know, because I, I always like to give a shout out to the National Pediatric Cancer Foundation and the Children's Cancer Center. I mean, there are organizations, and you guys seem to work so beautifully together, staying connected with, you know, all the different. I was only named two just now, but there's so many people that want to help. There are so many, and there's so many resources, fortunately, here in the Tampa Bay area, like you said, with research funding, with fun, uh, activities and things for families to go to, um, and then, you know, with us, with our cash assistance, uh, schools, there's, there's all kinds of resources here in Tampa. We're very fortunate to have those. Well, um, I thank you so much for coming and sharing, you know, your, your nonprofit with our Bloom viewers, and, you know, I'm so proud that you're keeping your, your daughter's memory alive. I know she's smiling down on this right now. Thank you so much. You're Thanks welcome. for having me. All right, if you would like to know more about No More Umbrella Foundation, head to bloomtampabay.com. And coming up on Bloom, Fenway Hotel's executive chef, Clayton Parrott, is joining us to whip up a seafood and melon-based agua chili. We'll be right back. Living the Tampa Bay lifestyle means enjoying the sand, sun, and outdoors fun. So get out, get active, and nurture those healthy habits. Hey there, I'm Gail Guayardo, host of Bloom. Now there's a new all-inclusive place with everything you need to shape your lifestyle, boost your health, and improve your wellness. BloomTampaBay.com, Tampa Bay's premier health and wellness website, made to help you feel good. Whether you're a fitness fanatic, beauty buff, or just want to take your first step towards positive change, this free website is for you. See the Bay Area's hottest fitness products, the latest workout crazes, and learn nutrition tips from the experts. Plus, discover local events and experiences designed with your well-being in mind. Cultivate a healthy mind, body, and soul. Check out BloomTampaBay.com, your local health and wellness website. That's BloomTampaBay.com. The following portion of Bloom is sponsored by TheLuxList.com on behalf of Gevi. Up now is a spotlight on Gevi's revolutionary ice maker, creating soft nugget ice for a refreshing summer. 
To make the summer months even more enjoyable, there's nothing like a cool and refreshing drink. And beyond those delicious ice-cold beverages, many people also habitually chew ice cubes as a healthier snack alternative. This is why dentist Dr. Eugene Antonucci, a leading expert in the field, recommends softer and chewier nugget ice. This home appliance is a great kitchen innovation. Its innovative design, superior ice making speed, and high quality output make it a standout in the marketplace. He also says there are advantages that Jimmy Ice has over the traditional hard kind. Hard ice can chip and crack teeth. The softness of Jimmy Ice can reduce the risk of dental damage, making it an excellent preventive tool for oral health. Oral health aside, consumers themselves indicate they do prefer a softer and chewier ice like Jemmy Ice. Jemmy Ice is so much more enjoyable. And this thing makes the best soft and chewy ice. Jemmy Ice can even play a helpful role in keeping a daily oral care routine. The regular use of Jemmy Ice can suppress the harmful bacteria in the mouth and gently stimulate the teeth, improving their rigidity and their overall appearance. Beyond the health benefits, consumers are raving about the Jemmy Home Ice Machine for its range of intelligent automation and one-touch button features. You just have to push one button and it creates perfect nugget ice. It's one click and just so easy. I touch the button, turn it on, and it makes ice for me. It keeps my ice fresh and clean, and honestly, the maintenance is effortless. Dr. Antonucci believes that it can be a practical self-care tool, especially for those with sensitivities. The soft texture of this nugget-style ice is great for those with sensitive teeth to avoid irritation. Jemmy Ice is also helpful for alleviating toothaches in children and can be used as a better choice for seniors. Due to its soft and small nature, Jemmy Ice is gentle on sensitive and fragile teeth. Consumers even love Jemmy Ice as a daily snack. So refreshing and so enjoyable. Consumers can learn more about Gevy Jemmy Ice Machines at Amazon.com. The preceding portion of Bloom was sponsored by TheLuxList.com on behalf of Gevy. You're watching Bloom, presented by Lifeguard Imaging. We begin where your checkup ends. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. We are back with Fenway Hotel's executive chef, Clayton Perrette, who's making a popular dish from Hugh Parlor and Chop House located inside the hotel. Chef, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So talk to me a little bit about what you're making today. Right. So we have a really fun summer dish. Uh, team kind of collaborated and we came up with a Western Mexico style dish. What's it um, called? Aqua so chili? Agua chili. Okay. So it translates to chili water. Okay. Um, so what I did, um, I've kind of shown our actual dish that we'll prepare. Um, my recipe, it's really awesome. You put it in a blender, it takes a few minutes to make this uh, water. You let it marinate for a little bit and then it's ready to serve minus your shrimp being cooked. Okay, and if you don't have a blender, you've kind of created an alternate way. I have <laughs> experimented even further. So okay. uh, the versatility of this dish is amazing. Uh, different profiles, you can add different objects to it. You have, uh, I have pineapple kind of to show that will help. Uh, here, what we did, I diced everything. So we're gonna put this in a bowl and almost marinate it as the liquid does. Okay, and what are we looking at here? So, um, our version will have our summer melons. Okay. Um, I have celery, I have cucumber, I have a garlic, I have our serrano chili we chose. Uh, multiple chilies to choose from, your uh, heat level, you can kind of choose what you like. Uh, and then fresh cilantro. And what's great about this recipe is we're looking at all fresh yes. ingredients that are actually really good for you. Exactly. The health benefits are awesome and it's also nice during this hot summer. Yeah. Cool down, you know, relax and it's very shareable. So family, you can definitely share it with the group. Um, with ours, we're going to serve chips so it's almost like a dip. Let's see, and we'll put all this here in the bowl. I'm going to reverse, instead of blending, I'm going to use all our liquids. Ours, we chose agave. Okay. Um, we're going to use fresh lime juice. This is absolutely delicious. And so you, you said it has, it's a, it's a Mexican-based recipe. Yes. All right. All right. So and tell me a little, as you're cooking, tell me a little bit about Fenway. You're in uh, uh, Dunedin. It's a historic Correct. hotel. We are on Edgewater. Okay. Um, it is a beautiful hotel. Yeah. Uh, if you have not been. I have been. It's, it's, it's so beautiful. Definitely worth checking out. Um, we have a bar upstairs. That's yeah. our hi-fi bar. Uh, we have our fine dining restaurant that's on our bottom floor uh, called Hugh. 
Uh, we have our parlor bar that's also attached to the uh, bar on the outside, so you can enjoy that as well. And then we have the great Gulf view. So. That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> Dunedin is such a cool town. If you haven't been, it's like every little nugget of the Tampa Bay area has so much to offer. So you oh, added, I saw some salt and... Um, salt, pepper. Okay. Um, I have a special ingredient that I use. It's uh, yuzu. Uh, so it's our little twist. Um, well, is yuzu something you make or is that something that people can make? This is something that we buy. Uh, okay. A lot of the Asian markets have it. It comes from... Northern Asia, it's um, an actual fruit. Oh, So nice. it's crushed okay. fruit. It's a little bit more pungent than our lime juice. So it gives it this nice little bitter texture to the dish. And okay. then the sweet and salty kind of blends in the middle of it. I like that. So with this, and you probably could let this sit a little bit longer. Okay, but for the sake of like yep. the, the, the television. So you, how long would you let that sit if you, we were making this at home? I would like this to go to at least 12 hours chill. Okay, so gotcha. So you get a really good marination. So we'll put this in the center of our dish. Man, it looks really good. And all the juices that you can get out of it, that's the actual flavor is what you want to marinate. And then from here, our next step of this process, I have tiger prawns. Okay. So these are always been one of my fun favorite, you know, experimental type uh, dishes. So the tiger prawns, these are our U4, so these are massive. They get even bigger. Um, these can be found at some of your local seafood stores. If you have shrimp as the original recipe, you can use the shrimp. Um, what I do with mine, I do a little bit of blackening season or Creole season, mm -hmm. just for a little extra flavor, but not too much because we want to taste that. And then we're going to set this right over there so you get a little extra. So you're going to get a dip and then a little bit of protein to go along with it. So the, <clears> for the, sh uh, for the, the, the prawn sh chef, how long are you cooking them for? I cooked for about four and a half to five minutes. Okay. On um, each side or total? Total. Okay. Um, and what level are we cooking it's at? It's a preference for me. I like it a little underdone. Some people, if you want it fully cooked, about eight minutes. You need four minutes on either side to fully get it. A little bit less, the meat will continue to cook as it's pulled off. Okay. Uh, so I like it to be a little under so you have a softer texture to the meat. Okay. I'm with you on that. I like that. So from here, <clears throat> our other portion of the recipe. So these are compressed melon balls. Okay. In the recipe, it'll show you if you have a food saver, if you have one of the Ziplocs, we add a cup of Chardonnay to it. Mm. We seal it so it compresses the alcohol inside the fruit. Okay. So it's our fun little factor. If you don't have that, it's okay. You can do the melon balls and then add the wine and let it sit overnight for another 12 hours. Okay. These are more garnished, but it's a fun little bite that you can get extra. And then as far as our garnishments, um, I like the fun stuff. So cucumber is okay. one of our portions. I like edible. Um, the next piece we work on is food waste. So anything that we can reuse, you can see where the melons, yes. I did the melon ball, but I'm also using this in that recipe so we're not wasting it. I like a little bit of onion. So kind of like your ceviches, mm -hmm. but a little bit more sweeter. We don't use tomatoes. That is the difference between the two of them. Okay. Um, and then that's our dish here. I love it. Is oh. this a popular dish? We will be starting this on Wednesday. Oh, okay. So, so we debuted it yes. here on Bloom. That's Absolutely. really exciting. And to your point, Chef, we you know it's so hot here in the yes. summer months. So to have something like this that's refreshing, you get a little seafood action in there. It's really quite that's nice. It. That's uh, the cool portion. If you stop by, you can watch the sunset, sit on our patio, yeah. and get something nice and refreshing. Don't you guys have a uh, rooftop bar too? We do. That's where yes. I was. It's yes. all coming back to me, <laughs> Chef. Well, we really appreciate you bringing this all together for us here on Bloom. It looks absolutely a dish, uh, absolutely delicious. And what we're going to do is we're going to share this recipe on bloomtampabay.com. It's going to be a little bit different from what we did today on the show. That one involves a blender, but you can do it this way as well. And before we go to break, it is time for today's Bloom trivia question. True or false? Agua chili and ceviche are prepared the same way. We'll have the answer later on Bloom. Welcome back to Bloom. Turning grief into growth can be challenging, and here with help is life coach and the author of The Story Shift, Become the Hero of Your Own Story, Mandy Shulis. Mandy, it's always so great to see you. Um, you too, Gail. I'm really excited to be here. And I'm excited to have you talk about this subject, because a lot of people think about grief as something that holds them back, which of course can be true, but if you learn to channel it in the right direction, 
it can be oddly a very positive thing. It definitely can. So I thank you for the, the story shift, but I actually have a, a, a rule that I try to follow that I haven't talked about a lot and I would love to share with you. And it's called the 48 hours to change your life. Okay. And the reason I, I was thinking about it as you were talking was when you go through any sort of like major trauma, mm -hmm. like you lose somebody or you get served with divorce papers or whatever, gambit of things can happen. Those first 24 hours, it's like you need to hit the pause button. Because so often when we're hit with things like that, we're probably going on autopilot anyway. And then the next 24 hours is going for look for those, those stories. It's the opportunity to shift that story and go, if I want to go back to school, what does that look like? If maybe I wasn't in love with my husband anymore or my wife and I, I knew something was wrong, like what does that next chapter look like? I, I call it s selfish self-care. So it gives you the opportunity to hit pause and get really curious about what you want that new chapter to look like. You also talk a lot about community, like you even say in the world of business, you should have a wing woman. What does that even mean? So a lot of times, you know, I always joke, we should be more like drunk girls in bathrooms. I hope you can say that. <laughs> you can, <laughs> we're good. But we get so caught up in taking ourselves so seriously, you know, and it's having somebody in your corner that knows you inside and out and knows maybe what your dirty laundry is or that you didn't get to brush your teeth that, that day or whatever that looks like. Having somebody that can help you navigate life without any judgment is indispensable. I like that. that you know, it, it is true. We all need that one person. And I think if we reflect deeply enough, we know most of us, if we're lucky, have that one person um, in our corner. This next one, I think all the gentlemen out there are going to be like, Obviously, <laughs> but you say it's a little, it's okay to be a little bit crazy. <laughs> My husband's going to be laughing if he's watching this. Yeah. So embrace the crazy. So one of the things that I always say when you're going through grief, it's okay to still talk to that person just because they can't see you or you can't see them. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're gone. Like my father passed away in 2020, right? Literally the week before COVID. I still talk to him daily. And I just have to talk it through. And I'm like, what, what would you do if you were still here? That's interesting. Yeah, there is a theme of my mom. I do the same thing. I, I talk to her. I'm like, what, how do I handle this parenting thing? Or what do I do? Because I think part of the grieving process, if you can take a piece of what made them so special to you and kind of carry that as your torch to pass up, because you can always pass a torch, but I think in life you should raise the torch and pass it up. And I think that's part of it is taking the good that what makes you love those folks so much and try to channel a little bit of it. 100%. You know, it's, it's all your journey and your grief and your experience of that grief is yours. Mm -hmm. And whatever makes you feel better and makes uplifts you and potentially could be helpful to somebody else. I'm all for it. So is this the kind of thing that you coach people through? Because we, we're talking about death, but grief really can be anything. So you, you called it out, wing woman. Mm -hmm. And 100%, my specialization is CEO level people that are kind of, I, I develop ivory tower syndrome, for lack of a better term, women and, and men, actually. I've always said women, but I've realized, especially as I had some male clients recently, it is 100% men as well, that they feel like they have to present this certain image to the world. Mm -hmm. and it's actually damaging to them and the people they serve. So I help them come down off the tower and get real with themselves about what's going on. I love it. Great conversation as always. I love seeing you. Definitely. Thanks so much, Gail. <laughs> and you can learn more about Mandy on bloomtampabay.com. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this. The following portion of Bloom is sponsored by New Bath Today. As many of us enter our advanced stages of life, here's one question to ask yourself. Is the space I shower in safe? Colin French of New Bath Today is here to explain how his team is helping customers avoid slip and fall accidents and doing it with style with walk-in showers from Kohler called Luxstone. Colin, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me on today. So Colin, I understand New Bath Today is brand new to the Tampa Bay area. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Although we're new to the Tampa Bay area, uh, we've been around for over eight years in business, okay? We're actually the exclusive partner with Kohler and their Luxstone shower systems here in the Tampa, St. Pete area, okay, and the surrounding areas. So why are people choosing New Bath Today for their shower remodel? Well, there's always the people out there that want to change the look of their shower, cosmetic reasons, but primarily safety concerns, aging in place, 
Um, there's over 200,000 adult injuries in the bathroom that occur every year. So we want to be able to come into the home and give a, a low profile step, easy in and out entry, customizable grab bars. We've even got some folding seat options as well. I didn't realize the statistics were so staggering for mm -hmm. these types of accidents. I know safety is essential. Can you explain what kind of performance you can expect out of these walk-in showers? Great question. Our wall system, the Luxstone walls, um, phenomenal product, okay? They are solid, non-porous, so they're resistant to bacteria, mold and mildew, growth, things like that, um, as well as they're, they're made of 70% crushed stone and fiber reinforced, so they don't, they're, they're resistant to chipping and staining like common shower options like tile and fiberglass options out there. And we're looking at before and afters. I mean, aesthetically, there's, they're absolutely beautiful. Do customers have a lot to choose from when they're deciding what they want to do? Yes, we're going to come into the home and do a 35 point inspection, um, bring in all the different wall colors, samples. We've got storage options, like I said, customizable grab bars and, and seating options that fold up and down as well. So a lot of different variety for our customers. So a, a viewer picks up the phone, they can call you. You'll have somebody come to their home, kind of walk them through the process yeah. and maybe help them out making selections. Yeah, we can get them down to a penny quote that's good for a year on their shower project that we designed in the house with them. Um, we can get financed and approved on the spot, and our customers are covered under a lifetime product and labor warranty. That is really fascinating. And so is it a major project, or are you guys like a well-oiled machine where you get in there and get her done? We are a well-oiled machine. Typically, our installers can come in and surgically remove uh, the pre-existing tub or shower unit, start from the base up, and get, get our showers installed within typically two days. And it, it really speaks volumes that a company like Kohler is, you know, working together with you to make this happen. Mm -hmm. We're actually only one of about 20 local home remodeling companies that do partner with Kohler across the United States. So very thankful. And, um, yeah, for people that don't understand, that's quite the brand name. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, listen, um, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Glad we got to come on today. Yeah, and we're excited to have you guys in Tampa. So awesome. thanks so much, Colin. Thank you so much. All right, call now, 813-437-2745 to schedule your risk-free in-home consultation. And we have a special Bloom Grand opening special for Florida residents, a free shower door. That's up to a $2,000 value, plus $500 off a new Kohler Luxstone shower wall and low monthly payment options. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this. The preceding portion of Bloom was sponsored by New Bath Today. It's time for today's Bloom trivia question. True or false? Agua chili and ceviche are prepared the same way. The answer is false. Ceviche and agua chili are pretty similar in many ways, but the marinade ingredients and marinating time set them apart. Ceviche marinates in lime for 20 minutes or maybe hours, where agua chilies are tossed in chili water and served immediately. Well, we hope you'll tune in again on the next Bloom presented by Lifeguard Imaging. We're helping you bloom outdoors from ways to enjoy pet-friendly places with your four-legged friends and survive the dog days of summer to fun summer recipe ideas from top personal chef Deb Murray. And I try my hand at zip lining, an adventurous summer activity for the whole family. So stay healthy, everyone, and I will see you on the next Bloom. Call now, 813-582-5222 to schedule your scan today. Content segments during Bloom were paid for by New Bath Today and TheLuxList.com on behalf of Gevi.